Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. Who is recovering from a freak hammer accident. Yeah, my finger got in the way. Yeah, her finger looks like a grape. Actually, it's a little better than it was yet last night. It looked much more grape-like last night. Yeah, she smashed her finger. She was putting in a flooring in Pinky Boo's closet, and she was trying to hammer the, the wood pieces in, and she smashed her finger. And I and, missed. Um, she missed. She missed, but at least it wasn't the nail gun. But at least we know that I can hit pretty hard. You you can hit it pretty hard, yeah. And sadly. Uh, <laughs> the one time uh, I wish I couldn't. Anyway. Yes, don't mess with her. Anyway. <laughs> We're going to talk about, I, I guess, what I would call a a pushback by employers against wokeness. Now, we did a video a couple weeks ago talking about unwoke.hr. And uh, we'll, it's still there. Yep. Yeah, it's still there. We'll, we'll talk about that again here in a, a few minutes. But there does seem to be more and more of a pushback against hiring activists to work for companies, especially when it comes to uh, unions, unions and, uh, you know, activism at work and all of that. We're seeing a lot of pushback. And I think the current political climate is absolutely escalating things. Now, I'm going to be fair. I think that you shouldn't discriminate against people, you know, based on their politics. That being said. I understand why they would make this decision, but it definitely can be argued as discrimination. Yeah. Now they're trying to roll back, as I understand it in California, they're trying to roll back uh, discrimination laws. So you can say, hey, we can't, we're not going to hire you because you're a certain kind of person. You believe certain things. Mm -hmm. Most of them are trying to get um, rid of white dudes. Um, so yeah. it, but the, it goes both ways. Yeah. So it goes both ways, but we're going to just talk about how, I guess, ridiculous the, the, even the job scene has become uh, because of the current political climate. We're also going to talk about what the hell a grifter is. Oh my God. Um, this is, we'll talk about this later, but I have, I have comments. This has been a, uh, a pejorative that I've only heard in the last couple of months come up in regards to YouTubers or people doing crowdfunding. It's the, it's the hive mind choice word uh, the last few months. Yeah. It, it just happened to take hold, I guess, last year. So I hadn't heard it, but now I hear it all the time. Like it's the go-to insult now. Well, you know, it's like you're a racist, you're a misogynist. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. This one especially, I have I have so much to say on this. Anyway. Uh, this is basically anybody who makes any money doing anything is a grifter. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll talk about that too. Before we get into it, we got three more days. Oh, it's oh, are you three days already? Yeah, three more days on Gosh, our- Gosh, I'm so busy. On our Clownfish Bubbly Steve enamel pin, if you haven't pre-ordered one, uh, get it while you can because when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. And uh, that will, I, as far as I know, once the order is placed, whatever's left over, if there are any left over, that is it. That is all we're doing. So it is at uh, shopclownfish.com. I'm going to grift. Mm -hmm. we're yeah, grifting. we're going to grift some t-shirts up there sometime. We're gonna, yeah, we're grifting. I'm looking at you, Neon. <laughs> I, got, I got them in the, the hopper. I just have to finish them. Uh, so we got t-shirts. We're going to grift and we're going to keep on grifting. So here we go. This is coming from Medium, actually, which I was surprised about. There was a law firm that had a seminar a couple weeks ago talking about how to spot potentially problematic employees who were woke and would probably start a union and cause problems at your firm, at your workplace. Uh, you know, so I, again, this is this is on top of Red Bull uh, firing their marketing team because they're getting too pushy with politics. Mm -hmm. uh, so they fired the entire marketing team. Uh, this is on top of unwoke.hr popping up virtually overnight, getting all kinds of backlash from news outlets like Vice, et cetera, et cetera. And now we have people actually having seminars about how to spot and eradicate uh, quote unquote woke employees. Now, whether or not you feel this is discriminatory, um, you know, it just it shows that this is in a trend that's increasing. Well, I mean, by definition, it's discriminatory. But, right, right. I mean, I, I I get why you'd want to do this. I mean, because we're seeing it more and more again. Look at Kickstarter, happened to Kickstarter. Well, let's talk about that. So Kickstarter had a union. They formed a union and it was hailed as, as being a, a major milestone for tech companies. But their union, what they wanted, this goes back to the whole grifter bullshit. What they wanted, it wasn't about money. It was about being able to control the narrative, being able to control what's picked, being able to control, you know, to be able to, that they, since they worked, they get to say who can't. And it can't put stuff on Kickstarter. Well, that was it. It wasn't. It wasn't about pay. Like a normal union's, like, hey, we want a forty-hour work week. We want better benefits. We want to not be treated like garbage. Yada yada. In Kickstarter's case, 
It was, a, yeah, it was about the employees wanting to be able to dictate what the product was. Because this all comes back down to uh, Zach's Kickstarter, wasn't it? Because he yeah. wanted it on there and his book had nothing to do with politics and they refused. But then with Kickstarter, the company said, we're not going to you know, do, you know, punch all Nazis either because it's, you know, they had a fit. They had a fit. They're like, well, you can't, have, you can't, you know, say this one violates stuff and then this one doesn't. And because, and that would have been a fair statement but no no we have to get unionized so we get to say so it wasn't about money yeah so the thing about this that, that you know the way this operates is like look um i understand you know people working for for companies maybe wanting a little bit more say in what the company does but i'm like that's why they have employee-owned companies mm -hmm. uh go work there go work for an employee-owned company at this point it's basically like or they start your own yeah or start your own but it seems it, yeah, it is hard and that's why these people don't do that we'll, we'll talk about that but this is you know, to me, feels almost like blackmail. Like, we're all going to unionize, and if you want your shit to get done, you're going to listen to what we say uh, goes as far as the product. Now, they talked about Camilla Zhang coming in. Now, she was she was let go. And I, I'll tell you, I actually think that the layoffs at Kickstarter were uh, uh, twofold. I think part of it was because, yeah, you know, they were they were hemorrhaging money. Yeah, well, they weren't take they, you know, when you're not taking projects because your union says you can't. Right, right. So they had to lay off 40 percent of the workforce. Uh, I also think that they use the opportunity to get rid of potentially problematic people. That is a personal opinion. Uh, I think that they used the pandemic as a catch all to be like, yeah, they formed a union. They cost us a bunch of business. Let's just say, hey, guys, we can't afford to pay you anymore and buy out your contract because the union wasn't even around for a, for a year. I think the pandemic is going to lead to excuses. This is happening a lot. I think it's going to happen at Disney. Yes. I think it's going to happen in a lot of different companies. They're going to be like, well, what's going to happen at HBO? We're going to talk about another video, Yeah. Um, it, which we've been saying was going to happen. Um, they, now they can use it as an excuse to weed out the people that they feel could lead to issues down the road. They won't say that, of course. They'll say it's for some other reason. But I guarantee you they're going to throw those people in there, too. If they have a problem with them. Well, Camilla Zhang was one of the ones to get gone. She was the comics outreach lead, and a lot of people considered her a gatekeeper. That she was, uh, she was a gatekeeper, basically. Yeah, she, she thought said she was. Yeah, yeah, she basically was, you know, uh, keeping certain people not necessarily out, but making sure no, promoting only certain, certain. She yeah, said certain flat out she was going to promote uh, diverse people. Um, and she was going to promote certain platforms. She was going to promote things. And, you know, she you you said she was one of the ones behind the union. Yeah. Um, but she was one of the ones definitely going out there. And, and it flat out when, you, when they hired her, she said, I'm going to promote diversity comics. So she is the one who basically started the union, too. It said, um, you know, it leads with Camilla Zhang. And then they talked about how it was a year of her working to convince her co-workers to unionize. And she'd only been there for like a year and a half. So she, within a couple months of getting into Kickstarter, was already trying to get people to unionize. Yeah, so, and, and what they wanted was control over what could be done. Right, and what happened? It ended with 40% of the workforce getting laid off. Because they lost a bunch of money. Yeah, they lost a bunch of money. They couldn't afford to, to give them the ridiculous salaries they were getting. And I think they offered to, they bought out their contracts because that was an option they had because it said they had to negotiate yeah. with the union. And they bought them out, I think, to get them the hell out of the company because there was conflict. I know uh, the head of the company uh, was like, we don't want to run always punch Nazis. The The employees insisted on it. And that's what, you know, became kind of the, the watershed moment, I guess, mm -hmm. for, for the union. Now, uh, you know, fast forward and here we've got a lawyer talking about, you know, watching out for woke people because the woke people are the ones that are going to push for the unions and possibly destroy your company. Very interesting that this is just like, and so this they're is basically like you're talking about how there's, I guess, a, t a group that's yeah. what the code is, is a group. Yeah, they're a uh, group. They said, watch out because Kickstarter, when the union happened at Kickstarter, then all of a sudden, all these other tech companies wanted to unionize. All the video game companies wanted to mm -hmm. unionize. Now, uh, like game companies, their hours are brutal. I mean, they're absolutely brutal. I, I know this. And again, I, I can see a union if we're talking about working conditions. Right. 
that kind of stuff, pay, that kind of thing. But not blackmailing your employers into only producing the kinds of product you well, want to produce. That's how it seems, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the difference with Kickstarter. And people are like, wow, this is groundbreaking. I'm like, yeah, it lasted like eight or nine he months. You said right when it happened, I bet there's going to be layoffs soon. <laughs> I did. You totally said that. I saw this before. Look, other companies, as I, I worked for a... Uh, uh, a newspaper publisher and they also did commercial printing mm -hmm. and i saw the guys in the the print shop want to unionize and i'm like they're gonna get rid of them because they're already these guys are already making at the time it was it was top dollar mm -hmm. and they were like you know i'm like they're not gonna go for it and sure enough that's what happened actually what happened was the owner of the company kept the newspaper side of it kept kept us and sold the print side of it and as part of the sale that basically breaks your employment contract because it's going to another company. Mm -hmm. So they just use the opportunity to fire everybody. So yeah. I, I knew it was going to happen. I mean, I'm not saying it's a, it's right. I'm, I'm not saying, saying it's right that's either. That's what they do. I'm not saying it's right. And people can be like, you're anti. It's like, no, I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying this is what happens. Doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. Sometimes that's just the way things but are. Here's my thing. <laughs> if you think this is discriminatory and, and technically by definition it is, um, but it's no more discriminatory than people in Hollywood saying we're not going to hire white white male actors anymore. Yeah. It's no more discriminatory than saying we're only going to hire certain ethnicities or certain LGBTQ groups because we have to meet a quota. Uh, you know, we're just, you, you can apply, but we're not even going to look at your resume. That's discrimination as well. You're not picking who's best for a job. You're, you're, ba you're picking based on, you know, race, gender, whatever. Politics. Um, politics. Um, both of which you shouldn't age sometimes too. All of which are things that you shouldn't base it on anyway. Um, but it's what happens. So is it all discriminatory? Yes. But is it happening? Yes. So it's, it's, it's every bit as expected that it's going to go the same on the other side. Yep. So this is the webinar. It's called Breaking the Code, Union Organizing in the Video Game and Technology Industries. It focused on a group called Campaign to Organize Digital Employees. That was formed in January 2020 by the Communications Workers of America. Uh, Code won its first campaign in March when it successfully organized employees at software startup Glitch as part of an unprecedented surge of tech worker activism. Oh, my God. Um, if you hear any weird noises like this, that's because I have ice in my finger. <laughs> that's, that's Geeky's ice pack. Uh, throughout the last couple of years, and this is the thing, this isn't about working conditions, this is about activism. Throughout the last couple of years, Microsoft employees have protested the company's work with ice, uh, Google employees have protested the company's work with police departments, and Amazon workers walked out in protest of COVID-19. I, I can see that last one a little more than the other two. Meanwhile, a group of tech contract workers for Google, uh, Kickstarter employees, and a small subset of Instacart workers have voted to unionize. We saw it happen with Kickstarter. It went up in flames. Um, so just this past Wednesday, which would have been last week, in a move particularly relevant to code hundreds of employees at blizzard organized a list of requests oh for management God. including fair pay and increased vacation time fair well, pay i agree with that's that's fair get in touch fair we can pay. do this um so they talk about you know all the the perks i guess uh, i think they are well this is on medium so i'm assuming she is in favor of the unionizing so here is a webinar called one zero uh registered for and attended the webinar which provide a rare window into how employers in the tech and video game industry are being advised to ward off tech workers burgeoning interest in unions part of it is perhaps the younger more woke component of the workforce maybe it's just a more socially active era we're in but it's clearly an element of this kind of organizing that we're seeing so basically they're saying it's the young woke activists that want to unionize for reasons that historically uh, we didn't unionize for. Well, now fair pay is something that they would usually unionize. That for. is a union that's thing. A, yes. That's a valid yes. reason. Um, I want to say who can and can't put kickstarters up. To make sure the right kind of people is not not a valid reason. Yeah. <laughs> so. so here we go. The host of the webinar, a principal at Jackson Lewis Boston office named Patrick Elgin Egan. I'm sorry. Uh, classified the new wave of tech organizing and activism as distinct from others because of its emphasis on company values mm -hmm. rather than employee wages, benefits, and treatment. He cited walkouts and petitions focused on issues such as pay equity, inequality between contractors, subcontractors, employees, and the type of work his employer is engaged in. For instance, uh, work with the Pentagon. I, so basically, if your company works with an organization that they don't like, these people want 
the the opportunity to to tell your company to get rid of that client even if they pay well and keep them in business. Yes, that is exactly it. Not, if you don't like it, go work for somebody else. Problem solved. Go start your own business. Yeah, whatever. There you go. Uh, I mean, this isn't like you know they're saying, hey, go down in the basement and beat those children. No, uh, but I'm because... like, basically these companies <laughs> around for years took years to establish these clients, and people they had those clients mostly when these people started working there. Um, if you don't like it, don't take the job. It's not, you don't get the, I, I think it's, I think it's totally stupid to think I'm going to come into this company and I'm going to raise heck until they, they dump their clients. I'm like, by doing so, you do know that means you don't get paid. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, they're talking about looking at, at people's social media accounts yeah, that's, to yeah. gauge what kind of person they are. And basically they're saying, um, don't, uh, don't hire these people. And, and we're seeing, you know, this goes on and on, but we're seeing more and more pushback uh, against this. And I think it's going to continue, especially as the financial pressure is put on companies uh, during the pandemic. And the pandemic is such an easy out. It's such an easy out. Just, oh, we ran out of money. Sorry. Well, not just Sorry. that. You hire these people that are like that and they're going to spend their work time on Twitter. Yes. Or, you know, wherever they're hanging out, you know, telling everybody, you know, how many times we see it, people are supposed to be at their jobs and they're constantly on the Internet yelling at everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what's going on. So uh, you're you're gonna see more of a pushback uh, in this area. So I would tell you, anybody, and this is just you know kind of kind of matter of factly, be be very uh, cautious what you put on your social media, mm -hmm. because uh, you know again you know employers can look at that, and and if you look like you're gonna be a problem, uh, they will probably get rid of you. Yeah, you know. If they think you're going to unionize, they'll probably get rid of you. Uh, if they think you're going to come in and start, you know, screaming at them about political stuff, they'll and, probably get rid of you. But, you know, insult your clients, insult your customers, you know, come in and demand the moon and, and then spend all their day on Twitter. Yeah. They're probably not going to hire you. So let's let's talk about making money. Let's talk about grifters. Oh, yeah. I love this. This uh, is fun. We're, this didn't really warrant its own video, but I, I've been very curious because I, I keep hearing this term and I'm like, I don't think that means what you think it means. Yeah. Because every time I think of of uh, the grift or grifters, I think you know like small time con men that mm -hmm. go from town to town. Yes. You know, uh, doing cards or, or selling the snake oil. You know, snake oil salesmen, so, mm -hmm. something like that. Well, now it's being used as a pejorative term against anyone who does uh, YouTube or works uh, in media outside of mainstream media. Anybody who has a contrary opinion. Yeah. So here's the thing. If they're supposed to be about a con, because you're on YouTube, you obviously are a grifter or a con person. Why? I think it's hilarious because let's examine this, shall we? We have these big blogs out there hiring people doing articles for $5 an article or so. And these people are, are just jumping at the chance to write for dirt cheap just so they could use the platform for their activism. Um, which one is more of a con? I love it too when you see these articles that are supposed to be news articles that are just basically op-ed pieces with their opinions shoehorned. Like the guy writing about the golden toilet and all that oh, in yeah. there. That was an op-ed piece uh, trying to masquerade as news, which is a grift. Someone who is trying to just use an, a platform to, to promote their opinion and not, and, you know, spin it and say it's news or the person that's covering it and calling it bullshit. Which one is a grift? Uh, I love the people like Rashira. You see these articles and it wasn't like here, you know, this would be a news story. There's a new show coming out. It's done by so-and-so. It's based on the original show. And here's what that was about. And, you know, this is coming out in these dates. This is the, this is the basic story. Here's the news. That, you know, opinions out of it. That would be news. But what you were seeing was, same with Star Wars, what you were seeing was, it says, you know, those incels, those people in their in their caves, the man babies, the people who hate women, all this stuff. That's what you see these articles. There's article after article written about this for Star Wars, for Shira, yep. Thundercats, etc. And they were on these sites, you know, masquerading as news. Those who write, like for CBR, five reasons that such and such is this and five reasons why it's not. Okay, and they're getting paid like five bucks, whatever, ten bucks these articles. Let me ask you, which one is a con? The one writing this shit or the people on YouTube? Like, what the hell is this? This isn't news. Do better. Who's the grifter here? I would say they are. I would say getting paid to use an established platform you did not build uh, to push your, your personal opinions and personal beliefs as news. Uh, yeah, definitely. And then getting paid for it, definitely. And then, there, then I guess part of this is a version because people who sell things or people who do go outside of the main, outside of their control 
to do things are grifters. And I'm like, uh, you know, so we, we're grifters because we make money. So, but they all, like, a lot of these people want socialism so that they can sit at home and get paid five bucks to write an article and put their opinions on everything that the government pays them. So they get paid a lot more just to sit at home and write stuff or sit at home and draw stuff. That's what they're wanting. But that's a grift. But that's a con. You're sitting at home doing nothing just so you can Being paid to put do your nothing. opinions out there. But you know, no, no. That's people a People who work. No, oh, for a grifters. For and you know what else sake. is funny? These people that are on there a lot of times have very little journalistic background, or they jump to like five different blogs and write basically the same article or five different places just to try to get it out there and you know to like sh 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 spray and pray that their opinion matters and gets out Carpet there. Carpetbaggers. Or yeah. yeah, or somebody like you know say Neon who actually worked as a professional editor and marketing person for years. We actually work professionally for many companies, but no, no, we're the grifters because we're conning you by pointing <laughs> out their bullshit. So let's let's talk about this. So I wonder where this got started from. Apparently, it came from a GQ article last year, and now it's what become GQ explains. Yes, it. it's become this uh, pejorative term against any any wrong thinker who has any opinion outside the mainstream media. Even though the mainstream media takes advertising, the mainstream media pays people. For yeah, their but the opinions. mainstream media is getting a hit because places like YouTube are taking their biscuit and they're pissed off. So they want to control everything and take all the money. So at the end of the day, they're calling everybody else a grifter. Because they're mad, they don't get to keep the money. Yeah, Vice is laying off, BuzzFeed's laying off, uh, Geo Media is laying off. Uh, meanwhile, YouTubers are doing pretty well. Alternative news outlets are doing pretty right, well. Right, because people are going there, and so they're mad. So we're gonna make up a word to insult them. We're gonna call them con men. So you come, so they wrongly think you're gonna come back to them for fair news. Yeah. So here, I mean, here's an example. Uh, Andrew Kimmel, blue check Twitter pundit, blue check. Uh, tweeted earlier this year, today's lesson in grifting presented by two of America's biggest grifters, Liz Wheeler and Ben Shapiro. Uh, he was talking about a video clip in which uh, Ben Shapiro read a commercial for Helix sleep mattresses. Uh, Kimmel was suggesting that once you pay for the expensive mattress, Helix will, will ship you one, purchase at Goodwill, and give the right wing insider cut the action. No, the implication is that merely reading advertisements on your podcast makes you a con man. But these websites that are hiring these people that think that they should get a blue check for writing one or two stories on them, uh, they take ad money. Actually, they're laying people off because they're running out of ad money. Maybe they ain't grift hard enough. Yeah. Uh, even though that's been long been a staple of the podcast business and the radio business. The news business, magazine industry, Newspapers. the newspaper industry, the, uh, the network television. Do we want to go on? What, where do you think that, that the money comes from to keep these things going? I think it's hilarious when you've got people that go on about 80s shows cartoons and they throw shade at 80s cartoons they're like they were just toy commercials i'm like yeah because what what do you think pays for the cartoon mm -hmm. you know you have to sell something you have to make money it takes money to make money those cartoons were not cheap to produce you might throw shade at the animation now because it hasn't aged very well but at the time those cartoons were even a couple hundred thousand dollars and an they episode. put out much more than they do today oh yeah and the, and, and you know it, the production values and some are arguably better and Butter everything else you know yeah. yeah and then you're like oh was this made to sell toys but at least they could sell toys i'm looking at you shira Ooh. But yeah, they talk about how this has long been a staple of podcasts and radios. Uh, but here we go. Podcast royalty Mark Marin has been doing the same thing for years on his show with a variety of products. But Kimmel would never call him a grifter because Marin's a fellow liberal. What's well, funny? They keep calling us grifters. And what are we? We're actually liberals. So, you know. We're, we're moderates. We got, okay, so what what prompted this little bit, and I had to, to look into it, was uh, one of the comments we had on a video yesterday was, you're just a bunch of alt-right light grifters. I was like, what the heck's alt-right light? I'm like, everything you said's wrong. So we're not, we're not, so I guess being, being a moderate means we're alt-right light. And being a grifter means, you know, we collect ad revenue off of our YouTube show. But who doesn't? I mean, everybody who, yeah. who does any kind of media usually gets paid in advertising revenue. Well, this whole, this goes works. back to that whole, this whole socialism mentality where you shouldn't make any money. And if you do, you should just give it to them. No, fuck you. It's my money. Exactly. You know, it's <laughs> like, I, I mean, this whole mentality is dumb. And it's like, you know, and we already live in a country that does have a de like a basically a democratic socialist. You have things that are, you know, paid for like, you know, fire companies, yeah, schools, yeah. things like that roads. Um, we do have some form of that, but to the place where they want to take it is just, you, money has to come from somewhere, people. So yeah, again, who's the grifter? The people who don't even earn their keep at these companies, because every job I've worked well, they at- they just show up to use the platform to try to push their activism. To me, that's more of a con than actually caring about something. Right, I mean, when I worked for a company, when we hired uh, somebody, 
we always looked at them. We say, okay, we're going to pay them fifty thousand dollars a year. Are they going to bring in a hundred thousand dollars a year? Mm -hmm. Are they going to pull their? Are they at least going to pay for themselves? And and you always had to ask yourself that question uh, when you brought somebody in, and and that was you know, and, and that's not the mindset now. Now it's like you owe me a job, you owe me a platform, um, because my voice is more important than anybody else's voices. So this is this is what they, they, they talk about. They say grifters are today's pejorative of choice. That's it. It just it just popped up like a couple months ago for left leaners seeking to discredit a small group of prominent. Well, it's not you just can, conservatives. You can do this here, but you can do this, this, this right here. You can stop with it. They're, they, you're picking these words and name callings to discredit. That is what the entire thing is. You call people misogynist, saying they hate women, saying they're sexist, saying they're, you know, uh, racist, you know, phobist, whatever. It's just a, a group of people trying very hard to uh, to you know bad mouth to make people look bad to try to bully and antagonize to get their own way and at the end of the day who's the one that's putting the con here the person who's out there saying the truth or the person that's calling them names trying to get people to try to discredit that person so they listen to them instead yeah pretty which much. is the con person you know I, so rachel maddow is a trusted member of the media and she gets paid for her opinions. But if you have a YouTube show or a podcast or something, you're a grifter, you're a con man, no. you're a, yeah. I, I mean, call, I say bullshit. And actually from now on, cause this will show you who watches this. From now on, when we get called that, we're taking it as a compliment. So if you use it as an insult in our comments, that means you do not watch our videos or you would have known that that is actually a compliment to us at this point. And you're by you're insulting us, you're complimenting us. And let's see how many dumbasses, you know, make this comment without actually watching what we're talking about. Yeah, it, it, it is. It comes down to money. This is all about money. It's 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 uh, they basically call anyone who's making money outside right. the mainstream media, um, you know, grifters. What they actually are are cheaters, shortchange artists, you know, and oh, you mean like having whisper networks and groups like that to, to, to try to cheat the system? You mean like that? Cheating Twitter to try to get Shira picked up. For Meanwhile, we've been we've been through yeah, they keep doing that. We've been through agents and all kinds of stuff, been shut out so many times because we're the wrong kind of people and we haven't once cheated to to try to get you know ahead on those kind of things. But yet these people can cheat their way through everything, but then they, everybody's calling, you know, people like us grifters. And it's like, kiss my butt don't care well th this is the thing and this is what it just shows this mentality and they're basically trying everything they can do to bully bully the economy and bully the country into being what they think it should be which is uh not what it's it's gonna be i'm sorry well and, we're gonna take it as a compliment because it's done by the, the moronic hive mind who can't think for themselves yeah so a lot of things going on here i do think that even though it doesn't look like it right now i think that the uh, pendulum is going to swing back to middle because the companies have to make money they have to stay in business and at the end of the day money talks and nobody is going to willingly lose money they're going to throw people overboard that are costing them money it just might take longer well, i think i'm just cases. hoping it does go back to middle and doesn't go too far the other way either no I don't want what's to go going too far on is it's just going too far and it needs to it needs to go back to middle it's like there are very few people that are in the middle anymore. I mean, most of America. No, no, most of America is, is in the middle. It's, it's just the voices on the internet. The, the ones who grifted their way into, you know, <laughs> platforms getting paid five bucks to write opinion pieces as news. Um, and that's what we usually target. We usually, we usually target opinion pieces as news and call out the bullshit. Yeah, because we see what it is. It's, it's all a game. It's basically uh, these, you know, these kinds of people, the wokes that are trying to, to get uh, middle America to agree with them. And if they don't agree with them, then they're going to bully them. And then their heads will explode because most, I think I would say a majority of our, 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 our audience is either not white, straight or male. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's, and then, that's then, fair. but then, you know, how, oh, oh my God, you know, our heads are going to well, explode. That's reason enough for me. Yeah, I mean, again, it just shows that they don't actually listen. They just are like. They don't listen. They're like, oh my God, that thumbnail. And you said something I like, and you don't like a cartoon show I like. Well, so we yeah. keep seeing opinions, we keep seeing like articles out there and, and people will just, you know, make a comment to it in general. Like, oh, you know, I like that show. I don't really like that character or, you know, okay. We saw it with the picture they did of the, the flash that where they had Iris on there and people were like why do they have irises on the flash poster when it's supposed to be at the flash simple obvious question yeah and immediately you're just a racist and sexist because you hate women and then they're like no i just asked a question because i was confused as to why they went with this first it, it was it, you know, it was a simple observation yeah and that that right there sums up the people who use the term grifter yeah pretty much um so i'm gonna wrap this one up we're mm -hmm. gonna wrap it up
Uh, Gigi's going to go nurse her finger. I have to go ice it again. Yeah, go ice your finger, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.